guys? We're here uh, after hours at the Robotics Summit and Expo 2019. I'm Steve Crow. Very special guest with us. One of the coolest things that we have here at the Robotics Summit. Ten-year-old uh, Michael Wimmer from North Carolina, just outside of Charlotte. Robotics prodigy, right? So just tell yeah. us a little bit about yourself, how you got into robotics. Okay, so I first started with the Lego Mindstorms and then I maxed it out and then I went from there to learning Python and now I'm programming the Now robot. How, how did you learn about all this stuff? I mean, it sounds like you're teaching yourself. A lot of trial and error and then YouTube videos and books. Okay. And, yeah. Well, tell us about the computer vision model that you did with the, with the RC cars. Yes, yeah, so what I did was I made an AI that could recognize different cars, a Corvette, a Tesla, a Lamborghini, and a Ferrari. And then my next step is to initiate an IBM Watson conversation after that. So if you hold up a Corvette, it says, okay, that's a Corvette. What would you like to know about a Corvette? Explain to me, what's a neural network? I should know this, but tell me. Okay, In your so, words, what's a neural network? So a neural network is basically where it's an AI that you can build where you have these different nodes and they're all connected by different weights. So first you have inputs and then they go into the different nodes and then those nodes can get activated and then they go to the next node and then they produce an output by the weights. What about uh, the RC car? You're using Intel RealSense to build an yes, RC car. So Tell me I'm about using this. the Intel RealSense camera D435i to and a neural network to drive an autonomous car. That's my second version of it. The first version was using ultrasonic sensors on the RC car to learn how to drive it. Unbelievable. Do you, have, like, you guys have robotics competitions down in North Carolina? No, not really. I don't know, First Robotics is watching, but give them their, your, your best pitch to First Robotics of why there needs to be First Robotics down in, in Charlotte, North Carolina. Well, what I think is, they don't need to look at age, because age does not match intelligence and knowledge. So age should not be a determining factor in anything. It's unbelievable. So I have a, I have a five-year-old daughter okay. that I'm trying to get into robotics, and I'm turning to yes. you, 10-year-old Michael Wimmer. Yes. Give me some advice. What can I do? She's interested in robotics. Okay. We, have a, we have an Anki Cosmo robot. She okay. loves that. Yes. We have a couple other educational STEM-type robots. but. Yes. If you're talking to my five-year-old, tell her why she should get into robotics more. Well, she should get into robotics because it's going to be the next thing. There's, the last job is going to be a robotic developer or programmer because they are going to replace these jobs. And therefore, you should thus get into this subject to have a job, sure. in other words. And the best thing, I think, is to get into that is called the RD3000. It's a drawing robot made by Educational Insights, and you can program it all the way from regular Blockly all the way to Python and JavaScript. What's your favorite programming language? Python. Okay, that was too quick. Um, so what's the long-term goal here? I mean, you're at a robotics conference. There's, you know, 70-plus exhibitors here. Right. They all need employees. You're 10. Mm -hmm. You know, are, are, you on, are you in the market? You're 10-year-old, what, fourth mm -hmm. grade, fifth grade? Ninth grade. Getting, okay. Getting so ready what, to become a junior next year. A high school junior. So your dad, from what I understand, your dad is in construction. Yes. Okay. Yes. If uh, that's a lot of folks at this show will tell you that construction is one of the next up and coming robotics markets. Absolutely. If you could build your dad, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. If you could build your dad one robot okay. that would help him do his job better. Okay. And you know, cause less wear and tear on his body. What would that robot be and why? Probably a trim maker. That might be his favorite job to do, but it takes a long time mm. to do every single part of trim in, in a whole house. So okay. Therefore, that would make it quicker. Okay. So what, what do you think are some of the important pieces of a robot that would put trim onto a wall? What are some of the key components you think that would go into a robot? For like example, you would have to have a template of the design you want for the trim. And then you also would ha have to have a cutter, of course, to cut the trim and roll the wood. Mm. And then it'd make the trim. And then you probably also would want a painting at the end of it to paint it whatever color, if you wanted white or whatever. 
What are some cool things that you like to do outside? Well, of I like to swim. Okay. I like to play basketball. Oh. And I also go to IMSA races, which IMSA racing. It's endurance racing, and I like to cheer on Team Corvette. And the reason I like it is because it has a lot of technology involved in it. It's not like NASCAR where every car is the same. They all are different, and they are different in different ways. And there's also technology in the cars by Pratt & Miller Engineering, which is actually based out of North Carolina. They have created a LiDAR system in partnership with Bosch that can, from the back of the car, instead of using a rear view mirror, they just use a camera and LiDAR system to detect what kind of car it is, what class it is, and how, approach, how fast it is approaching. Because there's four classes in IMSA, it has to know which class of car it is. What about self-driving cars? Have you ever ridden in a self-driving car before? I've been in a couple. I've been in a couple. No, but I do like Teslas. Teslas? Yes. What, what do you like about Teslas? I, I like the look and technology about them and that the, the funny thing about Tesla is Elon Musk did not design that company to build cars. He designed it for a, an, of an office space that you could do anything you wanted in that happens to drive. Okay. I don't think I've heard that one before. Yeah. You're enlightening me. I love it. <laughs> so obviously we're here at the Robotics Summit and Expo 2019 in Boston at the Seaport World Trade Center. What are some of the coolest things that you've seen in your day here so, so far? So definitely the Elmo servo um, what do you call it? controllers and some other very cool things here like different robots like manufacturing robots and different grippers that go on the robots. Yep, yep. sure. So, you know, we're already planning our 2020 show, right? Yes. We're, we're looking for keynote speakers. What would you, if you were to give a talk at a, at a show for robotics engineers, okay. what would you talk about? I'd probably talk about artificial intelligence in, embedded in a now robot or a Raspberry Pi or anything like that. So a little bit more on what some of the apps that you've developed you get the microphones okay. for the now. Yes. What are some of the cool developments that you've made for the now robot? So one of them is the microphone, which now sometimes is a little too quiet when I bring it to a school or wherever. So I developed a wireless Bluetooth microphone that clicks into his ear, and with that, it connect. It can tie it into the house PA system, and he can then become louder. Another thing I've done with the now is I have one from Charter Cloud. Shout out to Mike Rattis. <laughs> I um, told you, no free plugs. Come on. Hey. No. <laughs> so I, I have been awarded the most downloaded app on the App Exchange for the now, and that app was a little fortune teller game, which is a mix on the Magic 8-Ball. Okay. But with technology embedded into it, where it don't matter what you say, it's just a random number. And I also am a public speaker, so I've been speaking at the Mensa Annual Gathering this year in 2019 in Phoenix, and last year in Indianapolis, where I spoke about my educational journey and the struggles I had to overcome to get there. Where can, where can people learn more about you, what you're doing, how, how you can get involved? And, at my company's website, nexterainnovations.com. Thanks so much, man. Great to have you. I'll yes. see you tomorrow. Thank you.